Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of Gettysburg Great Games. I'm Jen Maurer, Assistant Director of Athletic Communications. And as we continue on in our series, joining us today is Ben Tabor, a 2017 graduate of Gettysburg College and four-year member of the Bullets Cross Country team. He's going to be talking to us today about the 2016 NCAA Division III Championships. And Ben closed out his incredible cross-country career with a solid performance at the NCAA Division III Championships, placing 46 among 278 runners. So Ben, before we start asking you some questions about the national meet, I'm going to go back to the NCAA Division III Regional Meet. And you qualified for nationals there with a fourth place showing, and you also notched your third straight um, personal record as well. So when you crossed the finish line at the Mideast Regional, did you instantly know that you made it to nationals or did it sink in more once the final results came in? Uh, I knew pretty much right off the bat. I knew with about two miles to go, I had a national spot pretty much locked up. I was uh, chasing down um, the top runner in the Centennial Conference who was from Haverford who finished third and we were kind of duking it out. So I knew I was having a pretty good day, but I knew right from pretty much the midpoint of the race that I had a spot pretty much locked up, but crossing the line was a pretty awesome feeling to beat some of the guys who I'd never beaten before, probably the race of my life at the time. So it was pretty exciting and it, you know, it really hit me as I crossed the line, all my teammates were there, some friends and family. So that was a really awesome experience. So when the words or someone said to you, you qualified for nationals, what was the first thing that came into your head? Um, I felt pretty relieved, to be honest. I thought I had a, you know, going in, I was pretty sure I, I had a spot locked up, but I thought I had a chance the year before and I hadn't had a great race at regional. So there was a, there was a lot of relief. I had a lot of people who were like, oh, like you got a spot locked up, but you know, you got to perform on race day. So it was just really an awesome feeling. It was really just kind of the race of my life. I think I ran a 5k PR in the second half of the race. So I knew I was feeling good going in and it, you know, it all just kind of came together on race day, which was a really, really awesome feeling. Yeah. So now let's talk a little bit about nationals. You show up a couple of days before you run the course, check it out. So was it a primarily flat course, hilly course? And yeah. It was a really flat course. It was really interesting. There's a, a big meet there. Uh, D1 nationals have been held there. I knew it was a flat course. It was a fast course. Um, there was a little bit of gravel, but for the most part, it was, it was pretty flat. The weird thing about it was the day before. So we got there two days before. The day before, it was a beautiful day. You know, it's early November, but it was a beautiful day. It was really warm. Everybody's running like shirtless and stuff on the, their kind of pre-meet day. And then the next day, it was 30 degrees with 25 mile an hour winds. It was just a very abrupt shift. Um, so it didn't run very fast on the day because it was so windy and so cold, but it was a, it was a pretty flat course, which is probably didn't play to my strengths as a runner, but it was a, it's a nice course. It's a really excellent venue they've got down there. Yeah, and so he competed in Louisville, Kentucky. Forgot to mention that part, but that's where the race was held. So comes meet day. Did you change your routine at all or did you keep it what you normally do to get ready to run for the Nationals? Um, well, you got you kind of got to change it up a little bit. It's the weird, the weird part about it is just me and Coach Shank. Shout out Coach Shank. Um, but it was just the two of us, you know, normally you've got your team, I've got my buddies around me. So it was weird. I was just kind of by myself. And it's just a really it, tricky mentally to be out there by yourself without just the one kind of person. I mean, my parents, my parents were there, but just like going out by yourself in the freezing cold for the pre me is a little bit daunting and then kind of getting on the starting line. I forgot to put my shoes on. I almost missed the start. It was, I don't know if I've ever told anyone that before because I was embarrassed about it. But so it was a little bit challenging mentally, but um, you know, you kind of just stick to your routine. You've got your drills and you do your two miles. So once you kind of get into that part of it, it's fine. It's just the, the kind of getting started, uh, sitting in the van with Coach Shank waiting to go run. And so the race, the horn goes off. You're running with the best of the best at division three. Were you feeling excited, nervous, or a little bit of both? Um, more focused than anything. I mean, I pretty much knew what I had to do. I knew it was going to be hard. Um, it's a huge field, 255 really excellent runners. I mean, you run a lot of races with that amount of people, but most of, you know, in cross country, the 
you finish five minutes ahead of some guys. So it's pretty clear funnel. But in this race, it was a really hard funnel with 255 guys slamming into each other, you know, 200 yards down the course. But I got out pretty much where I wanted to be. I was probably an 80th at the mile and then just kind of moved up from there, which was my strategy. Um, and then at about two miles, I was in 40th and top 40s all American. So I was like, I, I knew pretty much right where I need to be. And I was kind of where I wanted to be with two, mile, with two miles in, so three miles to go. Um, so that, I, ex I executed pretty much what I wanted to do um, over the first half of the race, certainly. So let's talk a little bit about the second part, or second half, I should say, of the race. What's going through your head at that moment? It's funny, I hit about 5K probably, so there's two miles to go, and I was in about 40th, and I was like, I'm not going further. I, you know, you, you sometimes have a moment as a runner where you're just like, crap, it's not quite my day. At regionals, I hit 5K, and it's like, okay, you know, it's time to go, and I was, I was pretty much all out at that point, and I was like, unless some people really, really collapse, I'm probably not going to be an All-American, and then, you know, you pass one guy, and one guy passes you, and you know, you don't know exactly where you are, but you're, you're pretty confident and everybody's yelling at you. So I pretty much knew I was exactly where I wanted to be. And I just didn't quite have that final gear. And then coming, there's a really long like 800 meter, half a mile home stretch. And you're like, like, I really have to turn it on here. And then there's just absolutely nothing left. So it was a little bit disappointing. You know, everybody's goal is to be an All-American, obviously. And it's tough in cross country because you can so quantitatively count it. Like, you know, soccer, football, you put up a good statistical season, but then it's kind of out of your hands. And then cross country, it's like, I need to pass that guy right there. And a couple of guys who I beat at the regional meet from my conference were right ahead of me and ended up being all American. So that was a bit of a bummer. But uh, overall, I mean, it was a great race. I PR and I can't really complain about it. I ran out and kind of executed what I wanted to do. Yeah. So when you crossed the finish line, did you just feel the sense of accomplishment? I just feel tired. Uh, <laughs> I know that that's kind of a, a lame answer, but basically you, you finish the line in the cross country race and there's almost just, there's not enough blood flowing through your mind to really, at that point, you know, sometimes you finish comfortably, but that was one of the ones that was just kind of all out. And I was just trying to figure out what place I finished. I was like, oh, maybe I miscounted and I was all American. And then I was just trying to find my, my sweats and somebody walked off with them. So I was really cold for the next two hours. Oh my, well, you were the first men's cross country national qualifier since 1998 and turning the best finish by a member of the men's or women's cross country team at the national meet since Bill Gray came in 33rd in 1994. So since you graduated from Gettysburg in 2017, what have you been up to? Yeah, so after I graduated, I moved down to D.C., which is where I live currently. Um, I've actually been working for the same company since then. We're a political campaign consulting and data firm, and I've moved up. I'm head of account services there now. Um, so it's a busy time for me with the, the elections obviously coming up. But it's been really exciting. I've had an awesome opportunity. I actually worked with several other Gettysburg graduates, which is really exciting. We've kind of come on since I've I've been down there and it's been really exciting. It's a, it's a really cool kind of startup company. We're doing a lot of really cool stuff kind of on the cutting edge of campaign data, um, elections data and all that kind of stuff. And so we've really been expanding out, got to meet a lot of cool people. I live uh, down here in DC with my girlfriend who's a fellow Gettysburg grad. So that's why we've got all the decor up there. Well, that is really cool to hear. Again, you, I don't think there's anywhere you can go in this region without running into Gettysburg College graduates. Absolutely not. It's great. So I'm going to ask another final question for you is, you know, looking, what type of advice would you give current and future cross-country runners looking to compete at, at Gettysburg? I mean, I think the best thing is that it's a really team environment. I mean, these guys are some of my best friends. I came on campus as a freshman and I had a, a group of guys who were there with me and they're still my best friends to this day, which is really awesome. And then just from an athletic perspective, it's just about working hard. I think cross country and track running in general, you can get so far just from hard work. You don't necessarily have to have that much talent. I didn't run cross country um, in high school. I played soccer and I was able to kind of come to Gettysburg and really have this success thanks to Coach Shank and Coach Hartzler, and then just kind of 
you know, having a good group of guys who are going to push you. And it's one of those sports where you can just go out every single day and work hard to get better, even if you're not the most naturally talented, which I think is just a really awesome thing. You don't have to be 6'6 or, you know, have any particular physical gifts. It's just a sport about working hard, which is, which is pretty cool, I think. No, absolutely. Thank you for sharing with that. And Ben, thank you so much for talking with us and sharing your experience of running at the NCAA Division III Championships. And just want to close by saying, make sure to stay tuned for next week to see who will be featured next in the Gettysburg Great Games.